Hello, my name is Sam New, and this is my submission for the final exam. Going over a societal issue that is relevant to me, choosing a piece of media and identifying how it reflects and offers a solution to that problem, and that's it. It seems very open-ended and up to interpretation, and I thought it most fitting to cover the societal issue of feeling out of place and feeling empty. I feel like that's a feeling we all have, and I think that that is a topic covered very well in the movie Everything Everywhere All at Once. The story of Everything Everywhere All at Once is one of, um, it's centered around two characters, um, Evelyn and Joy, um, two Chinese immigrants, um, kind of struggling to find their place. Um, it is very deep and has a lot of messages and meanings, but the ones I wanted to focus on mainly um, was finding, just being authenticity and finding purpose, while also finding purpose in an unfamiliar um, or an unfriendly environment. Um, and how that relates to me and so many other people in society and why I think there's so many uh, messages that kind of really resonate with people in the movie. Um, you can find messages throughout this, um, but looking at the kind of story a bit of uh, obviously being uh, Chinese immigrants is not something that's covered in media a lot. Um, the movie was praised for its representation and its um, kind of the, the actors who haven't gotten recognition in a while or haven't played in any big movies in a while, the ones that starred um, in the movie. And a lot of people, especially immigrants, um, uh, Asian immigrants, had resonated a lot with a lot of the messages of um, kind of trying to find your place, especially when you do something as huge as moving to another country. Um, there is an article by the New York Film Academy. Um, the article is called Everything Everywhere All at Once Meaning and Themes. It goes over quite a few of them, um, but one thing that the journalists wrote um, was Melissa Randall and Paul Ray Jimenez. Um, something really caught my eye near the end. Um, the question they asked, what if, looms over anyone who has up, uh, upend their life and moved somewhere else. Uh, that's a quote from Quan. Um, I think that the movie kind of goes really well into that and kind of leans in, especially in the scene where um, you kind of see the divergence of Evelyn and kind of the different paths her life could have taken, whether she stayed in China um, before moving to the U.S. or like took a different path when she moved to the U.S. Um, and kind of like how much that really like affected her life. I think a lot of people, especially who've done big moves like that um, from a different country, kind of resonate with that, like the what ifs, right? And is living at that. And I think Quan kind of hits that. Um, I've never moved from a different country, um, but I moved from uh, Tacoma, where I was born, all the way to St. George, Utah, uh, Leeds, Utah, actually, but the Southern Utah area, um, although, still in the U.S. was a huge culture shock for me as a kid, kind of, especially in, you know, rural Leeds, Utah, where uh, it's very, you know, LDS, very, um, a, it was a huge culture shock for me. I can't even imagine how much of a culture shock it would be to, you know, move to a different country, doing a, like, a halfway across the world, right? Um, and I think a lot of, especially the authors, kind of, like, resonated with the message and, and the feelings that Evelyn kind of show uh, when it comes to the struggles of like finding herself within this environment. I think she's probably struggled finding herself throughout her entire life, um, but especially like when moving and then, you know, marrying her husband um, and kind of trying to find her place in life, uh, being this like very traditional uh, moving to the U.S. and, and uh, her kid Joy not nearly being as traditional. Um, within, you know, their culture. Um, I think that resonated with a lot of people. And me as a kid moving in with, you know, out from my parents to my grandparents uh, and kind of having that, like, change and difference in perspective uh, and that, like, 
the tensions and struggles that would bring from like a parent-child uh, relationship, I think, really resonated with me. And the way they go throughout that conflict in the movie, um, when they end up, obviously, through the fiction of, you know, universe hopping, but kind of the way they find solace in each other, um, despite those struggles they have together, and using kind of love as a way to kind of kind of uh, be with each other um, as kind of being the solution or the closest thing to a solution they could find um, I think resonated with me really well and I think that resonates with a lot of people in society um, another topic that kind of leans into um, was like I said earlier a lot of people kind of praise the um, the uh, movies these past few years having a lot of like Asian representation from all different cultures uh, another uh, article by uh, from the Vogue um, by Lorelai um, Colgan uh, quoted um, saying that Asians in film are no longer destined to be Kung Fu Warriors psychics or secondary characters and representation it's not just one Asian star flying the flag of an entire continent and the fact that several iconic actors, directors, screenwriters are all helped move the needle, get to a point where, um, and they said the movie The Joy Luck Club seems to be a distant memory. Kind of this idea of um, kind of moving the, the Hollywood stereotype or like the role that um, Asians had in movies, uh, especially highlights uh, movies like Parasite and Easter Sunday, not just representing um, one uh, culture within you know the huge umbrella that is uh, different Asian cultures, but obviously Parasite being a South Korean film and Easter Sunday being from the Philippines, and now we have everything everywhere all at once with having a lot of um, like Chinese influence, um, kind of moving like the author says, moving the needle, kind of changing and creating um, a platform for people. Um, from those cultures to kind of have any representation and the person goes on to say that um, they've waited their entire life for everything everywhere all at once because people don't um, people don't view those movies as like oh those are Asian movies or like um, it's a movie about like Asian representation why the author says it was a big win is because the story told really resonated with everybody and the movie wasn't about the fact that um, the movie whether they were like Chinese or not um, would have worked and been a great movie um, and that's what made it work right it wasn't like solely focused on that and a lot of Hollywood um, directors in the past have tried to like get uh, this kind of forced representation or like artificial representation uh, by like making a big deal or like having the movie centered around that. Um, whereas that is harder to be like a, a shared experience for even the people in that culture, right? Um, so that was like another like huge impact on, um, you know, movie culture um, that I think really affected society. And one more thing that kind of goes in and leans into that like Chinese representation, um, is a study done um, called Chinese Connections, Critical Perspectives in Film Identity and Diaps Di Diaspora. Sorry, I can't read very well. Um, printed on the Temple University Press. So this was a, a paper on Chinese cinema um, and like identity throughout that. And a quote that um, it was kind of resonated with me, um, and the article will be down below, was what they talked about when it comes to uh, philosophical uh, considerations with Chinese martial arts. Obviously, everything, everywhere, all at once um, is uh, an action movie as well as all the different things. And we see traditionally in Hollywood in like the representation of uh, Chinese uh, martial arts kind of being um, kind of westernized in a lot of ways. Uh, the article quotes, um, the result of the philosophical considerations is that Chinese martial arts movie cannot necessarily be considered or described in terms of a static dichotomy of masculine versus feminine. Um, 
the um, obviously the two main characters both being female and being like uh, very like f- you know fighting um, when it comes to like traditional like western kind of what we see kind of creates this like masculine versus feminine and this like more stacked dichotomy whereas the article continues to say in contrast to western conceptions of movement and uh, for uh, paradigms sorry in Chinese martial arts to fight is not always to be male to yield is not always to be female and the attack and defense are not always opposites um, so kind of this like fluidity or like change of ideas in kind of martial arts in in kind of this like Chinese culture versus like how it's represented in, in uh, Western culture a lot uh, especially when we see like superhero movies and we talked about it and I've talked about some of my videos and uh, previous assignments um, kind of the representation of Western culture um, being a lot more like oh fight masculine um, like being um, you know more passive or like intellectual with like female um, and we see that be you know some people see it as positives in, in Western culture but to see kind of a different idea or take on it and not have it like have some of these ideas of um, the idea of Chinese martial arts and the movements not being like westernized or like kind of represented in the way that we represent in Western culture uh, was a huge positive as well uh, it was like really cool to see um, leaning into kind of that idea of representation identity and re- like relatability leading into um, kind of one of the overall messages of the film and how it uses things like identity is uh, the idea of finding um, finding joy and fulfillment and finding yourself and how to be like happy with that um, some scenes that like uh, stuck out to me the most was um, Evelyn's fight uh, near one of the final fights with Joy as she's climbing up the stairs um, the way that she is very Evelyn's very um, aggressive um, she is very like uh, bullheaded and the fact that she's like very straightforward but the way she fights she fights back um, and that's represented in a physical sense in the fact that the, the way she fights in the movie um, but she realizing that that wasn't being effective for her daughter growing up and even now that they're like time traveling like universe hopping people um, that like direct fighting wasn't working right she opts to try a different way of fighting right and in in Cherwell uh, the author um, Haley Chow kind of says it pretty well when saying Evelyn's traditional Chinese values and an inability to speak in anything but broken Mandarin to, to Gong Gong which is uh, her grandfather Joy's identity does not fit into any singular category and that goes into um, kind of the idea of just fitting in or like finding yourself after you know going into this uh, huge culture shock um, Evelyn, Waymond, and Joy are fundamentally multifaceted each choose their own way to fight. Evelyn with her fist clenched, Wayman with his optimism, and Joy with her bagel, which the author goes on to say, like, um, kind of the way that Joy has been trying to cope, um, essentially. Um, but in that scene, right before she climbs up those stairs, realizing that the way she's been fighting has not been effective, not working, she opts to fight like Waymond. And with going up the stairs up to her daughter, kind of the way that she fights the other people is kind of to, um, as the author states, using optimism. Kind of this way of finding yourself or like finding your identity as she goes up and kind of does these different like fighting techniques. She helps each of these people in their life uh, either like through love and affection or through like helping them find themselves. She like gets uh, a person and like sprays perfume in his face and the same perfume that like his late wife used to wear kind of like reminding him of um, his wife and that and that love they gave him and basically kind of finding these joys is kind of which is ironic because her daughter's name is Joy um, kind of using that to 
combat this f- feeling of no identity or like n- not connecting with her daughter. Um, that idea of like finding that connection and that sense of self and identity, even in uh, such a different environment, even with somebody who uh, is so like traditionally or like their views are different than yours, kind of finding that connection, uh, finding through that struggle together through uh, love. And that's what I love about uh, everything everywhere all at once. And I think every, everyone can relate to the situation that the characters are in with not being sure about yourself, with not being able to find like who you are um, and struggling with like your identity and then being able to um, not exactly solve things, right? Everything doesn't always work out in the end. That's, you know, life, it just goes on. Uh, but being able to find a little bit of yourself and a little bit of joy and solace in others. And that leads to my last article on Screen Rant um, written by author um, Ray Ekman and Tom Russell where they talk about um, kind of the overall topics that they found in everything all at once while they're talking about um, meaning to life. Uh, Quote, happiness isn't found by placing everything into one space or goal, but in accepting that even when having everything one currently desires, it's still possible to fill feel unfulfilled. The idea that the everything bagel in the show, having everything, um, everything that Joy thought could bring them happiness, they felt unfulfilled, even after fulfilling their desires. But it was the connection, the fact that they had somebody else in their life that they were having those same struggles with, that brought the little bit of solace that each of the characters found. And that can be seen in the final cut, in the final scene of the movie. So, the topics of everything everywhere all at once, the societal issues of feeling out of place, going somewhere where you're unfamiliar, not being able to find yourself, I think everywhere, everything everywhere all at once kind of helps connect that although those things are difficult and we may have these struggles with our relationships with people in our lives. It's those relationships that bring us a little bit of solace and comfort in such a scary and unknown environment and a scary and unknown world. So I think I came up with a lot of those because of this class. I've been very thankful for it and kind of the way it's made me think about movies, even ones that I've already seen and having to take them with a new perspective. And I think with my favorite movie, it's done the same. So Thank you so much for everything. I hope this kind of gets you thinking a little bit more and have such a good one.